Okay, so let's talk reading and knitting. Okay, so I was hoping to bring you the next instalment of my honeymoon dress project, uh, but I don't have a great deal of sewing time this week. So to, to get enough stuff together to give you something a bit different to what I've shown you in my previous two instalments, it's going to take a little longer. So in the meantime, I thought it might be interesting to just take a look at how I knit and read at the same time um, and the things that I use to, to help me do that. Um, I will also have a little bit of a chat about the books that I'm reading at the moment, the series that I'm working my way through because there are multiples of them. I'm a multiple whip kind of girl in terms of crafting and books. So let's get to it and take a look at my setup and uh, then we'll talk about what I'm reading. Okay, so this is my setup for reading. I've got this tray that just clips over the armchair or the arm of the armchair. Um, so that holds everything in place. It's much bigger than I thought it was going to be when I ordered it, but that's actually quite useful. So I can put a yarn ball on there if I'm crocheting, and uh, notions can go on there. I've got the TV remote there, that kind of thing, because I've quite often have music on when I'm reading. Um, and I've got my iPad with the Kindle app on there at the moment. I also use Libby, which is the app my library uses. So that's the basic setup. Um, obviously, the key part of this tray when I ordered it for me was the fact that it's got this iPad holder. Um, so I'll have a pattern on there if I'm watching TV or something, um, pattern up on the, the iPad there, or I'll have a book up to read. Uh, obviously, ebooks are key when you're trying to knit and read at the same time. So uh, let's have a chat about the things that are helping me to actually read and knit at the same time. Okay, so the first thing to think about when you're planning to knit and read at the same time is what are you going to be knitting on? It wants to be something that you can knit without looking at too much. So something fairly straightforward. I wouldn't want to be knitting on cables or lace or something whilst I'm trying to, to read. And I try and avoid uh, increases and decreases when I'm trying to read. So at the moment, I mean, I am still in the increase section of, of this, but uh, for demonstration purposes, I want a, a non-increased round. So uh, you'll get the idea. This is my Tolster tee that I'm currently working on. Uh, so I'm a few stripes in. Um, I am also adapting the rate of increase um, from the pattern to accommodate my gauge. So yeah, it's a stocking stitch project. This is a good project for knitting on whilst you're reading. Socks are good for that sort of thing. And the body after of a colourwork sweater after you're through all the colourwork stuff, that's all good. So that's your first thought. The second thought is what is the medium that I'm going to be reading on? So I do have on my, my tray a physical book that I need to read. I actually got this on uh, pre-order, but I haven't started yet. So I've had it a few weeks now. I haven't started yet because it's a physical book and turning the pages whilst you're knitting is not all that practical. Um, I am looking forward to this book though. It's called uh, Just Stab Me Now. It's by Jill Bearup, who is a YouTuber. She does lots of um, analysis of sword fights in films and that kind of thing. Uh, and this is born out of some of the shorts that she did. She's turned the shorts into a novel. So I'm really looking forward to reading that when I'm not knitting on something. Uh, so that's just sitting on my tray until I get round to it. I generally read most of my books though, partly because I don't have to worry about storing them and partly because of knitting on my iPad. And um, obviously in any e-reader or tablet, you'd be able to do the same thing. I use two apps predominantly. I use Kindle and I use uh, the Libby app, which is the app that my library is signed up to. And um, most of the books I'm reading at the moment are through the library uh, because they're free. Um, but touchscreen is important. So you can turn the pages without having to, to put your knitting down. So that's the physical, what are you working on? What are you reading on? That kind of thing, that's gonna help. But one of the things that's a real game changer for me, uh, so that I don't have to, to follow a pattern. Now, if I do need to follow a pattern, if I do need to mark rows off or anything, I have this stand as well that I can put my phone on. I'm not gonna demonstrate at that moment because I'm filming on my phone. And I have the same app for pattern reading on the iPad and on the iPhone, and now I've managed to sync them up for for years. I didn't even know that was possible, but uh, I had one of the settings wrong. And now, now they're synced. So I can have the pattern up and the book up at the same time if I need to, but most of the time I'm knitting on things where I don't need to refer to the pattern. Um, so 
one of the key things that's really helping me out and this is such a simple low cost thing my beginning of round marker i have a whole chain of light bulb markers off i have one light bulb stitch marker per round for the length of the stripes that i'm doing so when i get to this blue one that's got the progress keeper on at the end i know i need to change color so i don't need to refer to my pattern or to any notes or anything like that to know that i've gone far enough i have seen people with purchase row counters like this which is great but yeah you can just string together uh, some stitch markers if you don't want to buy one if it's not in your budget or if you just want to try it out and see if it works for you um whilst you're you're reading and knitting at the same time um i've also seen people make the chain the length that they want to knit to so measuring it out on a tape measure and then using it to measure their knitting as they're they're working so you, you clip it on to the start and you choose like a tape measure um but i'm using it as a row counter and that's working so well for me so i just knit round and round and round and as i get to the end of the the round so i'm already a couple of rounds into this stripe so I just move it down, the needle down to the next light bulb marker. So these are the ones I've already done. These are the ones still to go. Uh, so that is, is so useful, really, really helpful. Um, and yeah, like a game changer because I don't need to refer to the pattern whilst I'm reading. I don't need to, to watch where I'm at. I just need to move my stitch markers around. And when I feel that I've got to the progress keeper, I change my colour uh, or do whatever it else it is that I need to do at that point that I've measured out. So that's how I actually read and knit and i'll put in some footage showing me actually doing that um probably be a chapter's worth maybe sped up a little bit it depends how much i waffle about books in the next bit because it's going to be inserted or i'm going to be inserted one of the two there'll be editing razzmatazz ish thingy jigs going on um so that you can see what i'm doing but what am i actually reading at the moment well i am very much a mood reader uh, much like I'm a, a mood knitter, I have multiple projects on the go so that when I'm in the mood for a different project, I know what to pick up. So I've got my lace project for when I want something a bit taxing. I've got my socks for when I'm out and about and I've got um, more simple projects for when I'm reading and all this kind of thing. So I do like to have multiple projects on the go so that I can pick up whatever project my mood fancies. And, and that could be in, in multiple crafts as well. So yeah, I, my my approach to crafting is the same approach that I have to reading. Um, I like to have multiple books on the go so that I can uh, go with what takes my fancy. Uh, although at the moment, it's mostly dictated by what's available in the library, um, which is another reason why I like to have multiple things on the go, particularly with series. Uh, I don't wanna have to wait for the next one to come out before I can read another thing. Uh, and I might not be in the mood for for one style of book or one particular author, I might be in the mood for a different one. Uh, that being said, I am predominantly binge reading at the moment uh, because I've been catching up on some some series that other people have, have been familiar with for ages. So what are those series? Um, and what are those books? What am I reading? So I, I haven't started just having the Mac now as of yet, but I have finally got round to starting Legends and Lattes. So I've got that one on Kindle, which I've had for a while. I'm about halfway through that, I think. Um, and then in terms of series, I'm very much on a fantasy romance kick at the moment. So Legends and Lattes is my very different sort of book. And um, that's much more of a cosy, low-key, gentle book. Whereas the other books that I'm reading have a bit more spice to them. So I do like fantasy books. I like historical books. Um, I mean, I like bike books, essentially. Uh, but I do quite often lean towards the fantasy, the sci-fi, uh, the historical fiction, or a blend thereof. Um, so that gives you a sense of where, where, where I tend to pick things up. But it takes me a while sometimes to get to, to series that other people have found really popular because mood. Um, so I'm on very much a reading at the moment. I'm on about book 20-ish for the year and it's only early March so that's a bit ridiculous but this this cardigan <laughs> is the result uh, so I've wor I'm working through my way through the Sarah J Mass universe I've read all of Akatar, uh, so A Court of Thorns and Roses the series 
for those of you not familiar with that acronym. Um, really enjoyed that. So we started uh, Throne of Glass and Crescent City. So I've read the first two books and like the prequel short stories books for Throne of Glass and I'm about to start book three. I've also read the first two books of Crescent City and I'm waiting for the third one to become available at the library but that's going to be a way off because uh, that's quite a new book so obviously queues. I don't understand why we need queues for ebooks at a library but apparently they can only learn that to so many people at a time. But, uh, I have at least worked out how to borrow them for longer than a week through Libby um, which, which again took a while. I'm at the age now where things don't come automatically with technology. Uh, so yeah, so working my way through Sarah J Mass, I'm really enjoy enjoying that. Out of the three series, I have to say Crescent City is probably my favourite. Um, I liked Akita, I liked the characters, I liked the, the thrust of adventure, particularly once you get deeper into the series. And out of that series, my favourite is the last one. Um, and like the title escapes me at the moment but I'll, I'll put it on the screen for those of you not familiar with that series but that is, that is the last book in the series uh, at, at this point in time whether she'll do some more of that series in a future date I don't know but I really enjoyed that book um, I, but I, the whole series I enjoyed I like the, the relationships between the characters I like the the jeopardy that was there and the journeys that some of the characters go on um, and actually some of the story arcs for the characters it's not necessarily the main character in the series that has the biggest story arc and I like that because it's not what you kind of expect when you're thinking about how to plan a book or a series of books uh, so yes yeah, so we enjoyed that and um, Throne of Glass early days at the moment uh, that's a lower spice level much lower spice level than Akita um, it's a much milder at this point in time I suspect that will change there has been some spice just not as much. Um, not as keen on it. Some of the characters are interesting, some of the backstories are interesting. It doesn't have the same oomph that Akitar had. Um, I don't know whether that's a combination of the world not being as fantastical or and the, the characters not being as sort of oomphy. Um, so the or whether it's just one or the other. It's just something not quite as full in Throne of Glass so far as there was in Akita. But I am still enjoying it. It's not a bad series. It's just a very different vibe to Akita. Um, Crescent City, on the other hand, that grabbed me very early on. Um, it's a much shorter series, at least so far it's a much shorter series. Whether there'll be another one after the third one, I don't know. I've not read the third one. I don't know if it ends on a cliffhanger. Um, but that has a good balance between the, the non-fantastical and the fantastical. It, it's very definitely a fantasy world, um, but it's sort of rooted more in how life is for, for modern real life, real world. Um, it's got, got a good sort of blend there. The characters are really rich and vibrant. There's interesting backstories to them. Uh, the relationships between them are really interesting. Some of the choices that they make uh, add a bit more tension in a way that isn't sort of jeopardy. Um, I'm trying very carefully not to give spoilers incidentally. So I'm talking in, in general terms and I will do my best to stick to that. As we progress, it will get harder with one of the series, but we'll get to that in a minute. But the, the other series I want to talk to you about. So that's that's two series that I'm partway through. And once one, well, it's, there are two books uh, for Legends and Latte. So, so three series effectively that I'm working my way through. But the other one that I am obsessively binge reading at the moment. Oh, no, there's two more. Um, so let, let's put the obsessive binge reading one to one side a minute. We'll talk about that last because I'm very excited about that one. So let's talk about uh, the Hades Persephone series, which is by Scarlet St. Clair. Uh, so this is technically two series of books, but they both tell the same events in the same world, just from different perspectives. So I've read the first one, I've read A Touch of Darkness, and I'm about to start uh, A Game of Fate, which is so that... Touch of Darkness tells events from Persephone, is it Persephone Hades, 
series, so the touch, the touch books are from Persephone's point of view, the game books are from Hades' point of view. Um, so I'm about to start referring to the Hades ones when I'm, I'm not binge reading this other series that we'll get to in a second. So I mean that in itself is an interesting concept. You can read all of the Persephone books and all of the Hades books, but the Persephone books are going to give spoilers for Hades. So by reading one Persephone, one Hades, you get the two perspectives of the, the events. So I'm, I'm actually really interested to see how she tackles the Hades perspective and how things are going to be different in that book, what other events are going to be included that weren't included in the Persephone books, what bits are going to be missed out, that kind of thing. So that's really interesting and that is my, my next up to read after what I'm currently reading. Um, there is a fair bit of spice in in the uh, in this series, certainly in the first bit there was a, a bit of spice going on and again it's not as full on as some books but there, there, there's spice um, in a good way. Uh, yeah the characters are interesting, the backstories are interesting, the way they interact, interact is, is interesting and the whole take on the Hades Persephone dichotomy is is interesting. Um, the author has a, a, a very in depth interest in Greek mythology, which I mean you would if you're going to be writing <laughs> your own spin on Greek myths. Um, so yeah, so that's an interesting series. So I'll get to be reading the Hades book before I read the next Throne of Glass book because that's about to become available in the library in the next week or two. Um, and the Hades one, it's already there. I've already borrowed it. It's just sat there waiting for me. So yeah, so the, the final series I want to talk to you about, which is the one that I'm so excited by. It really is grabbing all my attention. It's the one I want to keep reading when I have to leave for work or when I'm supposed to be going to bed. So that's the one I'm reading into the, the wee small hours at the moment whilst I'm knitting. And a lot of this cardigan went into the reading of this particular series. It's a series by Raven Kennedy. Now, I've not read any Raven Kennedy before. In fact, I've not read any Sarah J Mass before this year. And I'm, for, well, tail end of last year, and I've not read any Scarlet Sinclair before, so these are all new, new to me authors. And um, the guy that wrote Legend Latte is also new to me author. Um, so that that's very much a theme for my reading this year. But the the series that really has me by the throat at the moment is Raven Kennedy's Plated Prisoner series. Now I am currently reading book five. Um, the series starts. Um, and this is stuff that's in the blurb on the back and I'm not going to go any further than like page one of the first book in, in terms of giving you information so uh, no spoilers um, the, the premise of the first book is that King Midas has uh, this, this girl in a cage he keeps her in a cage as his pet, as his toy um, page one of the first book and like I said I'm not going to go any further than page one so this is not really a spoiler. She's watching him have an orgy with six other prostitutes while she's sat in her cage going, but he loves me. Uh, so there's a good chunk of the book where you just want to shake her and go, really? Really? Um, but work your way past that because the, the, the first book very much explores coercive control. Uh, that continues to be a theme running through the next few books of the series. Um, there's a light, light hint of spice in book one, um, and that builds up through the series. So it's round about book three, book four, I think, that the spice really sort of found the chili. Um, but it is a really good series. It's really well written. Once you get past the fact that you want to shake some sense into the main character in the first book, um, but, I mean, that's to be expected with the attitude she has on page one. Uh, it, the, the character arcs are huge. The world building is fantastic. Um, you, you, yeah, persevere through the first book if she winds you up because it, it gets so much stronger from book two onwards. Um, and I'm really enjoying that one at the minute. So, like I say, I'm on book five. Book six doesn't come out until the end of August. So uh, not quite sure what I'm going to do for a few months once I finish the, the one I'm reading at the minute. Uh, the books are all named with things beginning with the letter G. So you've got Gleam, Glint, Glow, uh, Gleam, Glint, Glow, Guild, 
gold and the one that's coming out is goldfinch I, I know i haven't said those first five in the right order the fifth one is gold because that's the one i'm reading at the moment but the first four it might be guild first it might be gleam first i'm not sure um but raven kennedy plated prisoner really recommend it uh, it's it was apparently a tiktok sensation but i tiktok makes me feel old don't understand it don't go on it so uh, yeah, i yeah i only came across this by doing searches in, in the library app for fantasy books and um, so that's what i'm reading whilst i'm knitting at the moment um, there, there are other books that I have started and haven't finished that are physical books, but um, I'm not reading them whilst I'm knitting because page turning with needles doesn't work. So yeah, uh, any recommendations for things to fill the gaps when I get to the end of uh, Throne of Glass, when I get to the end of Crescent City, uh, when I get to the end of Gold and I'm waiting for Goldfinch to come out because uh, I am going to need some more books to read. Um, alongside the Hades Persephone and Throne of Glass series it's going to take me a little while to to get my way through because multiple books um, okay so thank you for spending some time with me today I will see you in the next one and until then there's this video here that may be of interest to you but until next time happy crafting and bye bye for now